Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in Heck Raz. And in this lesson, I'm going to be discussing Raz Mapper Calculator or Raster Calculator, it's called. On the screen here, I have the Heck Raz Users Manual, Heck Raz Mapper Users Manual. And this is the page that I'll be discussing in today's lesson. I'll leave a link to this page in the description of the video if you're curious to follow along. All right, say for example, you have your 2D flow model up and running. You've already ran some results. The RAS calculator allows you to analyze results for an entire raster layer, not just a single point or a line. It's just that it's a calculator for raster files where each individual layer is treated as a variable. All right, so to do that, we're going to come down here in uh, RAS Mapper. If you don't already have that open, go ahead and go to GIS Tools, RAS Mapper. That'll open up. And then in the RAS Mapper window, we can add a calculated layer by going to the, let's see, what we, there's two different ways to do it. You can click on one of your plans, right click, and then create a new calculated layer that brings up this master calculator dialog box. You can also do the same thing by going up to Tools and then Create Calculated Layer. All right, so there's uh, six steps outlined by the user's manual on how to create a new layer. That's a calculation of some of your existing data using this calculation box right here. They are step one, select an example script or user defined from this script dropdown. And then after that, step two, add the layers to be evaluated. That takes place in these fields right here. Step three is to add mathematical operations and logical calculated code. That's in this area right down here. And then steps four, five, and six is basically to save the script. So go ahead and select the file and the folder, and then click to create the layer. So what I'm going to do in the rest of this lesson is sort of go into detail on those steps, starting with the scripts. So this drop down here for scripts gives us the option for user defined. And then there's three scripts that have auto automatically been created here for us to select and use if we're interested. The first one is compare WSE. So when I did that, it automatically loaded in some layers and then automatically generated the code right here. And then it also pre-populated the name of that script and where it's going to be written to. It's going to be written to this calculated layers directory, which is inside my project directory. So you can go ahead and take a look at this code. It looks like there's a, some comments at the top and then the actual code here. And it looks like it's returning this output value. So output is the variable that is returned. So the water surface elevation here, it just does exactly that. It compares the water surface elevation by returning the difference. And then let's see, the other ones are depth times velocity. So when I made that selection, the variables changed as well as the code down below here. What this is gonna do, it looks like it outputs the depth times the velocity times a factor. And this factor is, uh, okay, it looks like it's one right here, but it gives you a quick and easy way to change that. And then the last script that's automatically generated is this one called hazard. Hazard is a complex output to compute the hazard level one through six based on the depth and the velocity. So the user manual actually has a diagram here, right here, that shows the depth, the velocity, and then these different colors, six different colors identify the level of hazard. So it looks like the deepest and the fastest water, that is hazard six, that's the most hazard. And then you can see the shape of the curves right here. And those, that's calculated in this equation right here. I didn't look too hard at it, but the flexibility within RAS, the raster calculator here is pretty much unmatched. All right, so let's say for example, we're gonna go with a user defined calculation. So I'll select user defined. And then what it starts us off with here in this calculation window is the variables that we're going to use. It says a water surface elevation and V for that's the velocity. And then it identifies the output variable as the variable that is hard coded and will be returning the actual value of that calculated layer. These two variables here are in this comment box at the very beginning of the code because they, those are the two variables I'm seeing in this layers, this user defined layer right here water surface elevation and velocity. And you want to think of these layers as variables. That's what the user's manual tells us to do. But we can add layers and we can also remove layers. So if I wanted to just delete this layer, I go ahead and select it, click on delete. It's gone. And it looks like it was also removed from the code window as well. That's pretty cool. I'll do the same thing with water surface elevation and then gone. And now my code has no data to actually work with. In fact, this variable WSE and V right here would give me an error if I tried to run it because it's no longer defined. 
before a variable can be used in the calculation window, it needs to be find, defined up in one of these three layer boxes. So we have the main layers. This is coming from the calculations. We have raster layers. Those are coming from just any other raster files. So it doesn't even have to be related to HECRAS, but as long as it's a raster file and it's georeferenced, then it would work. And then, of course, we have our terrains over here. Right now in this model, I only have one terrain, and it's called terrain, so that's pretty generic. But let's go ahead and do an example of the layers right here. I'll go ahead and click plus to add a layer. Now we need to specify the raster layer definition by plan, map type, and then animation behavior. So if it's a plan, I have two different plans. I need to select which plan I want to use. Let's go with 18-30. That's when the water surface elevation increases from 18 to 30 feet in this particular simulation. And then for map type, I have a bunch of different variables to select from, like water surface elevation, velocity, flow, depth, current number, fruit number, shear stress. I'm not going to read them all. You can read them yourselves. But let's just stick with the first one, water surface elevation. And then for Animation behavior, dynamic means it's going to be dynamically changing for every single profile or time step within the simulation. But if I wanted to make it just static, like a fixed profile, I can click on fixed profile and then identify exactly which profile I want to use when this map type is the max or the min or any specific time period within the simulation. So this interval here is 30 minutes apart from each other. And that's the same interval as the mapping output interval when you originally ran the computation. All right, so I'm going to um, not use a profile because I want to select on dynamic. And then down here, I need to give that variable a name. So I'm just going to call it WSEL18 underscore 30 and then click on add variable. All right, so that variable has been added now. You can see up here. I can add another variable if I want, and maybe I will a little bit later. But now it's also been added to my list of variables right here. And now I can add it in the script. All right, over here in raster layers, this would be something like soils layer, land cover layer, anything you want. Actually, it could be used as a mask if you want. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to a land cover layer like this one right here. Okay, I'll go ahead and give it a name, land cover, and then click OK. So land cover is now my layer. Here is the variable listed up here, and now I can use it down in my code. And then as for terrain, that's something I can just toggle on or toggle off. I might have multiple terrains, but this will be the unique name of the terrain. Okay, further below the layers, we have the computation window, which is right down here. This is where you write your code. Scripts are written in a simple text editor using Visual Basic or C Sharp. You are only writing the functional code, not the complete program, and the code will only be compiled and executed at runtime. To specify which language you're using, you can select language up here, either C Sharp or Visual Basic. After you run your code, you can click on this check code button to make sure that it works or it's compiled successfully. Like there was a green message down here at the bottom. I'll click it again. It says code compiled successfully. That's a good sign. If it's not compiled successfully, then you can go ahead and view the full results. So this is the full results on a successful compilation. This grayed out section here, we're not even seeing. This has the line numbers. And then the part that we added in, or at least we can edit right here, that apparently begins at row 20, line number 23 for me. And it goes down to about line 36. And then after that, there's some more code that is auto-generated by HECRAS, not something that uh, the user has direct access to. But it is nice to be able to see the entire code. Now, if I had a code that was not successfully compiled, then let me just go ahead and add in some dummy data here. I'm going to change this variable here to just name it something else so it doesn't actually exist as a variable. That should be a problem. I'll click on the check code button. And now it's small, but it says in red, there were one error, something, something. Let me read it again. There was one error with your code. View the full code. Okay, so view the full code. And then right up here, it tells us that there's one error. And it uh, occurs on line number 35. This variable has not been declared. All right. So that's correct. That was very helpful. Thank you. Up in the top right of the raster calculator, there's a few buttons here for save, import, and help, or show some examples. If you click on the question mark, these examples uh, can help get you started if the example scripts don't already. We have the general arithmetic operators, some control logic, math functions, logical functions, no data, and save and load as well as 
here looks like the three example scripts we saw. Yep. So you can go ahead and copy this code and then paste it into your calculation window. You just need to make sure that whatever variables are in the example code, for example, compare water surface elevation, you'd actually have to have a variable that's defined called depth plan one and depth plan two up here in your layers. After that, you're ready to save your script. So to do that, you're going to go ahead and save your script with a specific name and put it in the calculated layers directory. You can put it somewhere else, but you should probably keep it in the calculated layers directory unless you have a good reason to do something else. It will create a file with the file extension dot RAS script. So whatever you name your name, hazard dot RAS script would be the uh, output for this one. All right, let's go ahead and run through an example. I'm actually going to close this real quick and uh, show some results for my model. I have this plan right here called stage 18 to 30. This is where the water surface elevation increases from 18 feet up to 30 feet. I'm going to click on the depth, toggle that on. We make this a little bit wider and then go back to the beginning of the simulation or the animation and then go ahead and press the play button. You can see the water surface increases and it floods out this area right here. So just to make things real simple, I'm going to do an example of exactly that, just copying this exact layer. So I'm going to go to right click and create new calculated layer. I'm going to click the plus button to add a layer. This is going to be yeah, stage 18 to 30, water surface elevation and dynamic. So this is exactly what I want. For the variable name, I'm going to call it water surface elevation 18 underscore 30, and then add that variable, close. And what it's done for me is basically wrote the code for me. So it just says that if there's no data, then return no data. Otherwise, return that water surface elevation. In fact, I'm going to name the script that water surface elevation 18 to 30 and then click create. Where that added a layer for me is within this plan, water surface elevation 18 underscore 30. So if I toggle off the depth, the color ramp here is from white to black. So I'm not a big fan of that. In fact, it'd be a little easier if I turn off the background map and then go ahead and click the play button. All right, so that's basically the same data that we saw before. And then if I hover over, I'm, I'm seeing the data values, which is that water surface elevation. If I want to change the symbology, these layers that we calculated using Master Calculator, they behave just like any of the other layers. So in the, in the event of a dynamic layer, like what I have calculated, I can just double click and say modify that color ramp to something that makes a little bit more sense, like for water. Or this is depth, but that's fine. Then I can go ahead and click OK and OK. So now we have this maximum depth here. I could change the color ramp as well, but let's just back out and then click the play button. Okay, that didn't look like it obeyed the color ramp here. One second. So this would be a more appropriate color ramp for depth, not water surface elevation. All right, let's do one more example. I'm going to go right click and I can edit the script if I wanted to change it from here. I don't though. What I want to do is remove the layer and delete the source file, that's fine. So if I wanted to calculate a layer but not put it within one of the plans, I want it to be within my map layers, that's when you go to Tools, Create Calculated Layer. Now what I want to do is compute the depth between the two different plans. So right now the water surface elevation for this plan is 18 to 30, and then for this plan it goes from 20 to 25. So I'm going to go ahead and add a layer. So I'll use the exact same variable as before. I'll name it the same thing, add a variable. And the only thing I want to do for my second variable is change the plan. I want the dynamic map of the water surface elevation. And also change the name of that variable to just 20 to 25, add variable and close. Okay, so I've got the variables added that I want up here. If you want to rename the variable, you can select it here and then click on rename. There's also this edit selected variable definition, but we got what we want there. I just forgot to mention that. All right, so down below here, I want to go ahead and write out the code. And what I want to do is say that if this water surface elevation doesn't exist, return no data. Otherwise, what I want to do is return the value of the difference between these two water surface elevations. So I'm going to grab this variable right here, and I'm just going to say minus. And then let me go ahead and check the code to see if that's syntactically correct. It is. Doesn't mean it's going to give us the results we want, but there's no compile errors at least. All right, let's see what happens when I click create. OK, I forgot to give that one a name, so it's just going to be called calculated layer. If I want to rename the script, I would just go right click, rename that layer. I could call it, say, depth difference. 
and then click OK. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that depth difference. Yeah, so here is the first time step, and I'll just go ahead and click the play button. OK, that's interesting. So at the beginning, actually, let me go to the very beginning here. At the beginning, we have a depth difference of two feet, which makes sense because our first plan starts at 18 and minus 20 because our second plan starts at 20. That gives us a difference of two feet. And then if I scroll ahead to the very end of the simulation, where we have 30 minus 25, I should see values of positive five everywhere. Well, that's it for this lesson. What we did was calculate a layer that we generated by ourselves using the variables from a couple of different plan runs in RAS Mapper using the raster calculator.